Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. So, I uh, just wanted to let you know about uh, Mongo. Um, I'm kind of preferring to use it over all the other traditional relationship type of databases. Uh, just due to the fact that um, they're uh, really inflexible and they're just too bloated in this day and age considering where I'm at with this trading system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the first video to show you how to get it set up. Specifically I'm using a Mac here uh, but it's fairly quick and easy. Okay so what we have here is how to use NoSQL Mongo with a DB. So uh, this is on my blog. It also has a video in there as well. And uh, essentially, what I have to really do is brew install the MongoDB uh, right here. Uh, we'll get you started, I believe, as well as you might want to go through this manual as well to understand how to create collections and databases. So I'll, I'm going to show that in a minute. I'm going to create a new uh, database as well as a new collection. So in a nutshell, I'm using this proper, I, I, at this point, there is this GUI that uh, has been heavily, looks like heavily promoted uh, called Robo Mongo, but the thing just keeps crashing. So. I decided to use this Mongo Hub, which is again open source, which is this one. Uh, and uh, fr from it, you can explore all your data within the Mongo repository. So I'm gonna relaunch it here. And what we wanna do is we have uh, our, our database here called test. And then we also have a new collection called restaurant. So there's a number of ways to go about creating a new uh, database. Um, the easiest one is just to do the command use. So what we do here is you need to start up your Mongo daemon as explained in this video down here. Uh, there's also some instructions on how to get all that started uh, in this post. Okay, so once you get your, your Mongo up and running, as here, this is the daemon. Here, um, let me just create a new terminal. So we're going to create a new terminal. So we're going to load in Mongo. I think it's Mongo. Yeah, so there's Mongo. Now, don't want you to get confused. This is the daemon. This is the server. This is the client that we're connecting into here in the daemon. You'll notice because we just um, uh, connected, uh, we have now established a new connection. So from there, uh, let me just see if we can see all our databases. So there's two, actually there's a local database and a test database. Test database is a, is a crappy database that I'm just testing out. But I'm gonna create a new one called use QLM. So now it switches to that. So if I go back and use uh, show databases, um, For some reason, it's not getting updated, or I'm doing something wrong here. So that is a new connection. Fair enough. So I'm going to create a new database. So I'll call it QLN if it will accept it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to create a new collection. We'll call it. Um, I don't know. We'll call it uh, equity, I guess. 
because I'll have maybe in this database or this collection uh, another collection for Forex data and another collection for futures and options or something like that based upon asset class. I don't know. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. So now we have our uh, new collection. I couldn't get this far with the RoboMongo, so this is pretty good. So let me just check something out here. If I go show databases, there you go. So there's my new database I just created. All right, so knowing all that fun stuff, what I want to show you now is a second terminal that I've got currently opened up. Now here, let me just clear this. I'm going to clear this uh, crap. Okay, uh, clear. Okay. So what we have here is there's a Mongo import. What we're going to do is we can actually import all the data as CSV. Now, despite it being uh, on the command prompt in a, in a terminal session, outside of that, it's pretty, pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect into a, our QLN database. We've got our collection. I called it, I believe it was equity. Let's just verify that. Equity. Okay, uh, let me just verify that. Okay, so we do have this new equity uh, collection right here. So continuing along in a Mongo import. Okay, uh, so we need to clean this up. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it database uh, equity. So our type is going to be CSV, comma separated value. Now we have to give it where the CSV exists. So that's fairly easy. Uh, my case, I want to. Uh, which one was it? Uh, hmm. I guess I'll have to pause this. Hey, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually do an import of all the Yahoo data from a Excel spreadsheet that I've shown in the past. And essentially what this file looks like is a CSV. Um, we have to modify things, but this is it right here. Essentially, obviously we have our headers right here, uh, four or five of them. And we have five columns. Now, in here, in this spreadsheet, this is a CSV, but uh, it's imported. We have about 25,243 uh, rows. So that's what the file looks like, a CSV, OK? So here's the import that I just did, OK? Um, again, we have Mongo import. My, minus D QLN, which is the database that we just created, minus C, the collection, minus two minuses type CSV, obviously, for comma separated value, and then two hyphens file, and then the name of the file, and then hyphen hyphen header headline. And this is what we got. So it's connected to the local host, and it's imported 25,242, which is roughly the same. So now if I go into my Mongo hub, um, I can't remember how I would be able to see this data. So there you go. There's all our data with 25,242. So now uh, I'm not there yet, but I should be able to pull up that data within my Python or whatever my client uh, code will be.
So that's pretty cool. So let's continue along in importing our data among all these different uh, files we've got. So we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, so we'll start with the ETF. So in our case, um, we're going to keep everything the same, except we're just going to import the ETF. Oh, uh, there is a trick to this. you got to make sure because uh, depending upon how the data is structured, it's going to open with Excel. It should be okay. Well, we don't want any extraneous columns here because the Mongo import will not accept it. So let me just check the other files here. We're checking the futures. That looks okay. Uh, and then we'll check the um, indexes. Same. And then the last one, which will be the mutual funds. There we go. So I think I'm going to have to remove those. Okay. Save. Let me just make sure that that took effect properly. Yeah, so good. Okay. So what we're going to do now, because there's no structure to it, because it is no SQL, wah, wah, uh, we are going to do the first import of the ETF. Hopefully this will work. So that did work, 12,827. So what's the next one we're going to do? We are going to do future. So let me just do that. Future. 32,305. And one more. And oh, I got two more. So we have index. See how easy it is compared to uh, Postgres and no, uh, MySQL. It is easier. It is faster. It can be clustered, and there's a lot of advantages using this. And of course, I'm just gonna use this for uh, as, as I said, a regular relation when a relational database because I'm not doing any joins or anything funny, funky like that. So I don't really need the relational uh, stuff going on. Some people do, some people don't. I'm one of those that don't. Okay, so this did work. Let's just check out what we got in our um, in our uh, so we have equity. Just trying to think how to refresh this. Uh, Hmm. Look at this. Okay, so just want to check on uh, just want to make sure that uh, open equity. Let me see if what's under the stats. Maybe that might so we have um, storage size, size, oh, count. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. So it has 101,000, I guess, documents. And these are the total size. Um, so that's the stats of QLN. Collection stats. Uh, activity monitor, there's nothing going on. We can do a query if we want. We'll do that in um, the... This is some kind of heartbeat. And then, of course, we can export the file. So let's see what we can export. Uh, I'll put it back into the same documents. Want, uh, Yahoo Finance Excel. We'll call it uh, QLN Equity. Let's put And uh, save it. Export it, who knows? Well, it's gonna take a while. Okay, well, the main thing is we got everything imported as easy as that. 
Um, and uh, next video, I am going to test to see if I can read the data in. And if I can, we are off to the races, which is awesome. So I'll talk to you later.